Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wronged. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story, boss flirted with my wife, got demoted and moved across town. The second story, got assaulted at work by a woman and her daughter, actively pursued legal action and had her sentenced to jail time. The third story, guy used my mail and I did what to fire him from work. And the first story is, hit on an army officer's wife, get demoted and relocated. My wife recently started a job at the check-in desk at a downtown five-star hotel. One of her shift supervisors is a relatively young Lebanese guy, let's call him DN. DN is a typical Jersey Shore looking wannabe. He's got greasy hair, immaculately groomed three-day growth and tan skin. The funny thing is he's also pudgy and overweight, so the whole look just comes across as sad. I've met him a few times and he's smarmy, arrogant, and treats his staff like SH. Anyway, from day one he started hitting on my wife. He initially sent her a text, explaining that he lifted her number from the HR file as he was a dedicated leader and wanted to look after his team. He texted her pretty much before and after every shift, asking her to lunch beforehand or drinks afterwards in order to explain the system to her. These texts later devolved to telling her to sleep well in lots so you can be fully refreshed at work explaining that he wanted her looking angelic like you always do. Anyway, there's a ton of this random crap and he's always calling her pet names like babe, angel, or sexy. My wife tried to keep it professional in her replies, but it was quite clear this DN wasn't going to stop. She also always wears both her engagement ring and wedding band, so there's no excuse. To put this story into context, I'm currently a serving army officer. As a platoon commander who's led soldiers in Afghanistan, I would say that I know a thing or two about leadership. So his claim that he was just being a dedicated leader just seemed pathetic. I wanted to straight out punch this dude in the face schoolyard style, but my wife calmed me down as she didn't want to start trouble at her new job, and as a supervisor, DN could technically assign her the crappy shifts. Two weeks ago, my wife asked me to go pick her up from work. That way she could introduce me to DN and rest of the desk clerks as her husband. I went straight after my work, so I was in full uniform and arrived about 10 minutes before her shift ended. I walked straight up to him and introduced myself to DM. I towered a foot above him and gave him my hardest bone cruncher handshake. My voice was friendly, but my eyes were like a hawk. Good day, GN. My wife told me all about you. She's saying how you're a great leader and always look after her team. He reddened, mumbled something about being busy and walked away. I stared at him all the way as he exited the room. My wife and the rest of her team all burst out laughing. Pathetic. A few days after this incident, my wife gets an email from DN with upper management CC'd. DN works with her every day, so the only reason why he would send her an email in lieu of just telling her would be because he wanted her to get into trouble from the bosses. The email explained that employees are forbidden from having personal visits during work hours as it might reflect badly on the hotel. If she was to have someone pick her up, that I should wait in the loading area at the back of the hotel. What the F? I was super peeved now. Again, the wife calmed me down and told me to forget it. I love her, but she can be annoyingly professional sometimes. So I sat down and plotted revenge with my four of my army mates during our weekly drinking session. We decided that the revenge should be subtle and not traceable to me. This rules out physically harming him. We then came up with a series of events that would screw him with a period of four days. Mind you, I did this all while keeping my wife out of it. She would not approve. My mates and I went to an internet cafe and spent three hours signing up his work email address to all number of strange websites from all corners of the internet from dating to armadillo appreciation, anything and everything, something we say I will never be able to erase from my memory. The raw internet is a horrible place, children. We surveilled him from when he left work and tailed him to his house. It wasn't hard, as we had his shifts courtesy of my wife. After acquiring his address, we waited till the middle of the night, sneaked into the yard, jacked his car up and placed all four tires up a tree he had in his front yard. Let him puzzle that one out. Finally, my friends and I called hotel management independently six times at varying intervals pretended we were guests and complained that we saw DN behind the counter looking at inappropriate stuff on the internet. I feigned disinterest when my wife came home excitingly telling me that DN was late for work as someone had removed his tires and that management had come to ask him a few questions but seized his computer instead when he wasn't there and were going through his emails. A few days later DN had been demoted and moved to a different location across town. Three star motel owned by the same corporation. I've never told my wife my involvement. A lot of people have been asking how come my wife didn't just go to HR. What I didn't reveal in this story is that this is the fifth time that something like this has happened to her at various jobs. She's a genuinely bubbly and friendly person. A lot of guys automatically equate that to mean she's DTF. 
I'm sure this is a common story amongst a lot of professional women. On the two occasions she did go to HR, she found it an awkward and humiliating experience. She had to attend mediation sessions with the other party and was told by management at a different hotel chain that maybe she should stop being so friendly. After the HR mandated three session mediation sessions, she gets transferred to a crappier shift and gets labeled as the troublemaker by some of her coworkers, including other females who feel that getting hit on on a daily basis is part of the job. My wife would likely be in a management position herself, but we have to move every two years because of my job, so she never gets the chance. So yes, I got angry. The second story is, when the system works in your favor. So a few years ago, I worked as a valet for one of the biggest hotel chains in the world. It was the best job I ever had in regards to the pay. I took home thousands of dollars a month. It may not sound like a lot, but I was 20, so it was a big deal for me. I had started in the summer. Come winter of the same year, it's two days before Christmas and relatively slow. There's me and one other person working the front drive. I tell him I want to go home early, so he goes for his break. Out of nowhere, a truck comes speeding around the corner and pulls into the driveway and stops in a way that would impede traffic. I take a gander but decide not to approach as they don't appear to need any help and they didn't bother rolling down the windows or exiting the car. A few minutes go by and a car pulls up behind the truck. I approach the car, offer the driver assistance, and provide directions to the garage. However, the truck still is not moved, so I approach to ask them to pull to the side. When I approach, the driver does not roll down the window, so I tap on it. The windows are tinted incredibly darkly. I'm greeted by a mumbled voice, so I ask if they can roll the window down so I can hear better. Down comes the window, and I'm greeted by this troll doll of a woman. What the F do you want? Don't touch my effing car. Shocked, I politely ask her to pull forward. She rolls the window back up and stays in place. I tap on the window again, but now she's getting out of the car. She puts her chest to mine, or to my abdomen at least. I'm almost a foot taller than her, and proceeds to try to push me back, all while screaming profanities in my face and making threats. I'm remaining calm, not letting her get to me, all while asking her to get away from me and to leave me alone. She continues trying to back me down, constantly being in contact with my person. After a few moments, I extend my arms to create space between us, and she attacks. Now, I know how this might sound to those of you that are skeptical. I assure you it was the gentlest extension of my arms I could muster. I made sure I didn't shove her or push her down in any way. She returns swinging at my face, scratching and punching me. She had knocked my glasses from my face, threw stomach punched, and at one point even grabbed my D like she wanted to take it with her. Now I'm upset, still doing my best to keep my cool, I defend myself and put her in a front facing headlock and restrain her until help arrives. In the mix of the whole incident, her daughter attacked me from the back as well with punches and an attempted headlock, but I proved to be too resilient. Told my job I was going home for the day, went to press charges and to seek medical attention. Returned to work the next day to be suspended pending an investigation, all while being assured by my manager, yeah man, don't even worry about it, it's just corporate's dumb rules. Mind you, the entire incident was filmed by the hotel's security cameras, so I had no reason to lie or feel like my job was in any danger. Subsequently, I got fired for said incident and had assault charges brought against me for my assailants. We go to court, these bees don't even have lawyers, sitting in the courtroom laughing and making snide remarks. My defense lawyer had subpoenaed the tapes and brought them in as evidence, which had the charges against me immediately dropped. But that's not all. Now the DA had picked up assault charges against the two of them. They're offered a PBJ, probation before judgment, and turn it down in favor of a jury trial, all the while still coming to court laughing and giggling, being represented by a public defender. Case goes to trial. Jurors are shown the video, which completely backs my story and destroys theirs. This bee is still lying, insinuating I just walked up to her and assaulted her and her daughter. Come to find out this is her fourth time being tried for assault, and she's never been to jail. She gets convicted of second degree assault, and I'm invited to give a testimony at her sentencing trial. I have no criminal record, had a full-time job, am a full-time student, and had a beautiful baby girl less than a week after being suspended and fired from my job. B got two years and they cuffed her in court. When the realization that SH just got real for her hit, she begins to cry and sob and look around as if looking for help. It was at this time me and her had locked eyes across the courtroom. I proceeded to stare this bee in the face and do a full-fledged victory dance in my seat as they carried her away. The last story is, change your dang email. So I've been a massage therapist for about 10 years until I had to retire due to health reasons. As I owned my own business for most of those 10 years, I had a business email. But being a small-time thing, it was just a Gmail. 
The email was my name all in one, no spaces, no underscore, just my name at gmail. Well, after about five years, I started getting emails for someone with apparently the same name. But he tried to work around this by using my name as his email. I got simple things at first, stuff like signing up for websites. Then it started to get weird. I started getting his teachers talking to me on the email. I informed them that they had the wrong email and they would apologize. Then I'd get the same message from the same teacher. I asked them to inform this person that he changed his email, that this was a business email and had nothing to do with anyone in Florida. I was in Texas at the time. This continued for about three months and then it stopped. I assumed things were done. Then it started up again. Must have been a semester break. Then I get a confirmation for a new phone delivery. This was not the first time for this sort of thing and I always started to decline the deliveries and cancel orders. However, this one came with his physical address. I think, great, I'll just send a physical letter to this person, probably freak them out and they'll change the email. I was professional about it all though. I used business letterhead, was very polite in asking him to please stop, that he was hampering my business with emails that didn't have to do with me, yada yada. Included was the mailing address of my business. He replied, just a single sheet of paper with the words, and I quote, F off you see, signed my name. Classy, but the emails stopped. For seven months. Then they started right back up again. Now, I was getting his emails from his job. I got his work schedule, meeting notifications, and even a copy of a pay stub once. I also found out he moved to Illinois. Then things got creepy. I started getting confirmations to various adult sites he was signing up to, including his common username, and on a few wonderfully insecure sites, the password he used. Always the same password. Let the games begin. I started to sign him up for different sites using that name and the altered email, always with a test on the site to see if it came to me first. Most didn't. Then I'd go through the site and hit every favorite on the list to ensure maximum spam. This seemed to solve the issue for a few months. Then it got fun. I got an email from his coworkers confirming a picnic the company was throwing. I replied to the email, sorry, do you mean the same my name lives at address and that's signed up to? And I'd list half dozen adult sites that he'd been signed up to all sites I had not done. I then started to email those people his grades, as I had been given them years ago, and how he had conversations with teachers that seemed wildly inappropriate. To put the cherry on top of it all, I mailed a copy of the physical letter he'd sent me, which he physically signed to the company. Yes, I kept it. It's a great conversation piece. The last thing I ever got to my name that wasn't common spam was about a month after I mailed the letter. It was something from his friends saying they were sorry he got fired recently. I don't know if I was responsible or not, but I like to think I had something to do with that decision. Do hope the picnic went well though. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Have a good one.